Following the shooting of Tupac in Las Vegas in 1996, if you wanted to know who was behind it, all you had to look at was who his associates went after for revenge. And that week, the Bloods associated with Death Row Records declared war on the Southside Compton Crips. If there was ever any doubt over who was responsible for Tupac's murder, this bloody street war should have immediately settled the debate. On the night of Tupac's shooting in Las Vegas, the Bloods who are part of his entourage and who are held at the scene by Las Vegas police refuse to cooperate. They have their own justice in mind. According to a search warrant filed by Compton gang detective Tim Brennan, while still in Las Vegas, a person referred to as Trey, who was likely Trayvon Lane, who was there in Vegas with Tupac when he was shot, and whose beef with Southside Crip Orlando Anderson was the reason for the fight at the MGM that night, tells the Pyrus that the shooter was the same person they jumped at the MGM, and that person was Keefe D's nephew, who would be Orlando Anderson. The Pyrus decide right there to retaliate against the Southside Crips, saying it's on as soon as they get back to Compton. Two days later, on September 9th, Some of the alleged bloods associated with Death Row Records meet at Looters Park in Compton, the park associated with the Looters Park Pyrus and the Mob Pyru, both allegedly aligned with Death Row Records. Some of them discuss going after Southside's OGs in general, basically planning retaliation against Southside leadership, even against individuals who weren't there when Tupac was shot. And they begin planning drive-by shootings in Southside's neighborhood. We, the homies, they had everybody had a meeting, said, got down together, and well, we know who did it. We know Southside did it. Now, retaliation is Southside. We decided it, I mean, basically, his own. They just killed Tupac. That same afternoon, this Compton gang war begins when one of the alleged Southside Crip shot callers, Darnell Brim, is shot and wounded. According to a police interview with Brim nine months later, He claims he was shot five times in the back at a 99 cent store. And he confirms that it was because of what happened in Las Vegas. Tragically, an innocent 10 year old girl is also hit when Brim is shot and was listed in a report at the time as being in critical condition. Ironically, Brim wasn't even in Vegas when Tupac was shot, but street rumors may have erroneously placed him there. In fact, to this day, it seems like Brim is still getting unfairly associated with Tupac's murder, as he was when he was sentenced to a decade in prison on drug charges just a few years ago. This is all part of an apparent pattern with the Southside Crips, at least according to Brim. His Southside set, referred to as the Glencoe Crew, and Keefe D's Southside set, who are the Burris Crew, are often at odds with each other, and Brim blames the other set for starting problems that his crew then has to deal with. He even says in his interview back then that he's not even friends with Keefe and that Keefe likes to talk a lot. (laughs) And apparently the feeling was mutual because he says Keefe told him, you know what's going on, you don't like us and we don't like you. Just keep it like that. So from the Glencoe crew's perspective, the Burris crew starts problems and then leaves Glencoe to deal with it. And Tupac's murder is their biggest problem yet. But all of Southside knows this is coming, so they prepare and stick to their neighborhood. It ain't like we didn't know what street they was on, but those streets was empty. They wasn't stupid. They, they, I mean, if they knew his own and, and there's going to be retaliation, let's not hang out like this, or let's hang further back in the cut. You know what I'm saying? Nine times out of 10, when you're in the car driving and you're looking for something, you ain't driving like that. Because everybody knows if you're driving like that and the window's down, they're going to start shooting at you before you start shooting at them. Everybody in the neighborhood know that. So riding around looking for something, you don't see it, let's roll. An alleged delivery of weapons arrives at one of the Southsiders' houses the following day. That same day, the brother of a former Death Row Records bodyguard is shot in a drive-by shooting. And a Looters Park Pyru and a second man are shot in a Looters Park neighborhood. The suspects are believed to be Southsiders. 
So now the Crips are taking the fight back into blood territory. The following morning, September 11th, a man named Bobby Finch is killed in front of his home in a drive-by shooting. Finch had allegedly been involved in the drug game, but was unaffiliated with the Crips and had worked as a bodyguard in clubs and supposedly for an actress on the show Martin. But he reportedly had a nice car and the Crips rivals were looking for OGs. An informant tells Compton PD the mob killed Finch, meaning the mob Piru associated with Death Row Records allegedly killed him. It's believed that Bobby Finch was an innocent victim of mistaken identity and that alleged Southside associate Corey Edwards, who was in Vegas the night of Tupac's murder and who was reportedly connected to an address next door to Finch, was the real target. Corey Edwards would tell detectives in 1997 that after Tupac's murder, he'd warned Finch and his brother that the mob Piru would be rolling through their neighborhood. Two days later, on September 13th, Tupac dies in the hospital in Las Vegas from wounds he suffered in the shooting. That day, two more Pyrus are killed, just north of Southside's neighborhood, and Crips are suspected of being behind it again. But that same day, Bloods allegedly shoot two people at the north end of Southside's neighborhood. And a day later, three Chester Street Crips are also shot just north of Southside's neighborhood. Blood gang members are suspected again. Eleven days later, Compton Police Detective Tim Brennan files his search warrant with the Compton Superior Court, listing these shootings as well as the murders of Elbert Webb and Tupac Shakur, both of which he says Southside Crip Orlando Anderson is suspected of committing as the reasons for a massive raid planned for nearly 40 addresses reportedly connected to alleged associates of both Crip and Blood sets in Compton and surrounding cities, with the goal of stopping the street war sparked by Tupac's murder, in which over a dozen people on both sides have been shot. These raids scoop up a number of alleged gang members off the streets, at least temporarily, and lead to the confiscation of a ton of guns and ammunition. And that's pretty much the end of the war. Until Biggie comes to town a few months later. I think there's been some confusion that another alleged Southsider named Jerry Monk Bonds was also killed during this gang war, and that Bonds was also accused of being involved in Tupac's murder. While it's true that an informant speculated that Bonds may have been involved in Tupac's murder, because they saw Bonds in a white Cadillac in Compton two days after Tupac was shot. Bonds actually wasn't killed until six years later in an unrelated incident when he got into a fight at a club in LA's mid-Wilshire district and the guy he was fighting pulled a gun and shot him. Of the four individuals alleged to have been involved in the shooting of Tupac in Vegas, Orlando Anderson died in an unrelated shootout 18 months later DeAndre Smith died from health issues in 2004. Terrence Brown died in a shooting at a Compton marijuana dispensary in 2015. And Keefe has lived to tell the tale over and over again. And maybe for some people, it's enough that the streets caught up with Baby Lane one way or the other, even if it wasn't in direct retaliation for Tupac. 